Hi, everybody. Hello there. Jerry. Linda. And Gizmo. For the, yeah. Pay attention. He'll be back there, but you know how lazy he is. He's going <laughs> to lay down here in a minute. We're the Village's Newcomers. Today is... Send us your questions. We've got your answers. Jerry and Linda's Mailbag Monday. That's right. It's Mailbag Monday. And we're going to bring you lots of good questions. I want to tell you right now that if you stay till the end, we're going to have a special segment. Gizmo is getting fan mail, and he has <laughs> about four questions today that they've asked him to answer. So he'll be answering those at the end of today's segment. So you'll want to stay tuned for that. <laughs> we had our COVID shot, as you guys know, never in the history of the newcomers. Right. Have we had so many thumbs down on a video? We did. That boggles my mind why anybody would even care if we got the shot. Yeah. We're not giving you a shot. No, we're doing the shot. <laughs> but uh, anyway, thanks for those of you, the thousands of you that gave us thumbs up. But that's how it goes in showbiz. Yep. Time for a few shout outs. First, we start with Jose and Maria from Orlando. Coffee with our logo on it. What? Isn't this awesome? Got two bags. One is, uh, they're both freshly ground just this week, February 14th, which was amazing. And it was so fresh and so wonderful. Dark ground, regular ground, medium roast, wonderful. Oh, love them. Oh, it's delicious. Delicious. Thanks, Jose and Maria. Very nice of you to think of us and uh, send that. Before we get to that next one, I'm, I'm going to do this. Now, once in a while, we'll give a shout out on a birthday. And today, we got a letter from Pat and Denise. And they said, can you please give a shout out to your biggest fan, Denise Carroll? You're 63 today. So, happy, happy birthday. birthday. All right. <laughs> oh, the next shout out is to Maureen and Colleen in Hawaii. And they are sisters. And they sent us a bag full of goodies. This is awesome. <laughs> Let me show you this. Oh, should we do this? Let me show best? you what they sent me. Oh. Here it is. It's a beautiful shirt. Check out this hula girl on there. <laughs> I cannot wait to wear that to the neighborhood party. Oh, but look at mine. Bling, bling, bling. You're, I have sea turtles. That is just a, a pale <laughs> second place. Look at this. <laughs> Uh, Are you kidding? Thank you, girls. That is just unexpected and over the top. Maureen and Colleen, thank you. That is that is a lovely gift. And there's a whole ba bag full of other things very, in there. Very, very nice. Calendars, notepads, even a $2 bill. What? <laughs> thank you so much, everybody. Yeah, thank very you. Kind. Thank you very much. Our first question today is from Susan. Susan writes, We know grandchildren can't stay more than 30 days in the villages. But what about our 22-year-old son? A lot of people want to know the answer to that. They do. Because you hear various things. You don't know what's really true. So I called the headquarters, and I found out an official answer. So it's not my answer. It's because it's coming from, from the villages. If they're 18 or under, they can stay 30 days. Anybody 19 and older can actually be a permanent resident. I did not know that. That really shocked me. It really did. Well, I mean, it shouldn't really shock you because we have a son who has a resident ID card that technically lives with us, but he's in the Air Force. True. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, 19 and up can be somebody in the house should be 55 or older, but there are actually some small print to that also. Somebody's making noise back here. <laughs> what? I think he was settling in. We'll get to your part after a while. I told you. Said, Just hold me, on. Let me speak. Um, this is from Joseph. Oh. oh, he'd like to know, are you able to make interior uh, changes into your home without calling the higher up developers or whatever? <laughs> the higher ups. <laughs> Here's what Joe actually said. I hope it's all right to call you Joe. You signed your letter, Joseph. 
I'd like to know if you're able to make interior renovations to your home without consulting the villages. That's a, that is also a great question because so many people fear the compliance office. Not people here, but people out in the world that think HOAs are, are tyrants and yes. tightly governing bodies that restrict everything. <laughs> so this is a good question because I didn't know. So once again, I got on my phone, which by the way, I bet you have a phone. <laughs> you can call the uh, deed compliance office here in the villages to find out these questions or the sales office down at Brownwood is who I usually call. Right. And uh, very, very lovely people there that gave me some good information this week. So give that a try. But the answer, can you renovate without their permission? Yes, you can. The word I got yesterday was, if it alters the exterior structure, if you remove an exterior wall, if you add on, if you, if you do anything there, yes, you need permission. But inside your home, it's pretty much okay for you to make changes as you see fit. Well, I see people putting closets in them and that's right. I'm sure there are exceptions <laughs> to that. So don't take our word as the law, but basically inside, okay. Outside, no okay. While we're on the subject of what can you do and what can you not do, I got another letter this week. We got it. Uh, she wanted to know, can you put a bird feeder in your yard? And that was Debbie and Mark. And Debbie, I called because my immediate idea was, yes, of course you can put a bird feeder in your yard. But then I thought I better call. The answer to that was, yes, you can if you hang it from a tree. Oh. If you want to put it on a post or a pole or a shepherd's hook, you have to get permission. Oh, I yeah, did not know that. I didn't know it either. <laughs> But in the villages, let me tell you about bird feeders. And we love bird feeders and, and we, we love, love to feed birds. the birds. Yes. You can attract the wrong kind of birds. We saw a great egret, which is a bird about yeah, it's big. that tall. It's real big. Big bird, big long beak, trying to destroy a lanai one day. Oh, yes. Be trying to get in something to eat in there. Yes. And we saw that, and he was trying over and over, and I thought he's going to get it done because that beak was like a, a deadly yes, weapon. Yes, yes. So these birds will cause damage. The sandhill cranes, the egrets, the mm -hmm. herons, they can cause damage, but they're so beautiful. <laughs> so you might want to make sure you're attracting the right kind of birds if you put up a bird feeder, but go for it. Hang it from a tree. Right, but they do also attract rodents, don't they? Uh, bird seed? That's what I'd be nervous about. Every once in a while, I'll see a dead rat. Uh, on the cart paths. Not often. I mean, no. we're talking like one every five or six months. Yeah. So they are here. And some people think that, you know, rotten oranges or limes or, mm -hmm. or lemons that fall on the ground will attract them. And so may birds feed. But anyway, that wasn't the question. I know. Hang that feeder from a tree if you want to. Right. Kevin writes, my parents live in Ave Maria. That's, I guess that's a place. I thought it was a song. That's a good song. <laughs> it's a good song. Uh, and when he visits, the mosquitoes are terrible. Mm -hmm. How are the mosquitoes in Central Florida? Can you spray or does the villages spray for mosquitoes? That's a good question. Mm -hmm. Mosquitoes, they can, they can be horrible. They can. Uh, late at night and really early in the morning in the summer, uh, they spray here. They have trucks that go through and spray, so we're thankful for that. But we head inside when we hear that big truck coming. <laughs> um, mosquitoes have not been more of a problem here for us than they were in Indiana. Mm -hmm. If you sit out, in, we, sometimes we sit in the driveway with this uh, social distancing. We'll yep. go out there and they, friends will come over. About 15, 20 minutes before sunset, yeah. you may see them start coming out. You'll hear them, really. You know, they'll be buzzing, and then we usually go in, but... Uh, they do spray. This truck comes by and it, I guess it has a fogger mm -hmm. and it fogs out the street. It goes down the street on one side, turns around and comes back on the other side. It must do a really good job because mm -hmm. we don't have a problem with mosquitoes. Gary and Terry want to know, is there a kickboxing club in the villages? I don't know. Uh, let's go find out. I'm going to walk down the street here because I know a guy that can answer that question for us. What's 
up, bud? Looks like I caught you at the right time. Yeah, what are you doing? Are you ain't playing golf? No, not playing golf. Today we're, we're uh, filming one of our shows, and a viewer wants to know if there was a kickboxing club in the villages. And I know you don't kickbox. You're into Taekwondo. I'm into Taekwondo and karate. And karate. So is have you heard of kickboxing in the villages? There's no kickboxing because most people here are so old, if you hit them, you can hurt them. <laughs> we got people in our club that are 60. we got people in our club that are 84. Well, thanks, Mike. I didn't mean to intrude on you. I want uh, people that are watching this to know that I would say a month ago or less, you had a stint put in your heart, didn't you? Yeah, I had a knee replacement January 20th, and I was back in karate three weeks later. And I had a stint put in here the day after Christmas, and I went back like four weeks later. All right, neighbor. Well, thank you. We want to take this out with a, with a little flurry on the bag here. Yes. Nancy writes, I have a power wheelchair. How do I travel? Do I travel on the roads or the cart trails? Am I too near the traffic? It's a good question. You may have seen on a recent bike ride, I passed a fellow that was in a motorized wheelchair. Mm -hmm. I was on the cart trail. He was on the sidewalk. Sidewalks would be your best bet. You'd be away from traffic. You'll be away from the golf carts. You're away from the bicycles. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you have to travel on the streets, which you will sometime, to get to a sidewalk, you'd have to go down one of our neighborhood streets, which are very quiet. Yeah. But still, those motorized carts are 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 short. You know, it's mm -hmm. visibility would be it could be a problem. So, I would say, totally unofficial, ride on the sidewalks whenever you can. Mm -hmm. Kendra writes, "Are there any multi generational families in the villages? I'm considering moving there myself. I'm 59, and my parents are 79 and 80." Kendra, that is so common here. Yes. People living with their parents or even grandparents. You may have seen a show we did about a year ago with Ruth. Yes. Superwoman Ruth, 93 years old now, and she plays pickleball every morning and golf every evening. That's right. And she lives with her adult son. And if they had if he had a grand if she had a grandson that was over 19, he could live there too. So yeah, you can have multi-generational families here. AJ asks if you can wash your car in the driveway. Yes, you can. Yeah, we see people do it all the time. Well, I, I didn't. I knew that. I knew that we see people, but the yeah. villages is driven by a, a complaint sis, driven system. So, uh, if somebody breaks one of these restrictions and it's not reported, you know, it's like the tree falling in the forest. Uh, but I called, and the answer was a resounding yes. You can wash your vehicles in the driveway, which is good. And the, the drives are sloped down to the streets, which have a curb or a gutter, which leads to a big drain, mm -hmm. and it will flow. So it was a good question because that soap is flowing toward the drain, but uh, totally okay. Gary Knutson, he writes, My question is, after this much time in the land of endless summer, <laughs> Do you miss the other seasons, spring, fall, and winter? Well, that question for me would have to be a, a big, fat yes. I miss them. I do, too. Uh, but we get fall here and we get winter here. But we're not going to get the colorful leaves and we're not going to get the snow. We'll get some cold weather. And December this year, we were near 30 or below. No? Not below 30. Not here. 31. 32. No, no, no. We had some cold weather. but We've only had our furnace turned on about four times. Right. But I I have used mittens and earmuffs walking the gizmo, so we do get cold, but we don't That's get That's because your blood done thin. <laughs> I do miss the colorful leaves. Yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. You know, we had the farm we've talked about before, yeah. 85 acres of beautiful, huge trees. Mm -hmm. Go out there when it snows, man. It's, it was like a Hallmark card, you know, beautiful. We miss that. But then we see the news reports of what's been happening in the last few weeks with sub-zero temperatures. I could take a day snow, of it. Snow, ice. Maybe a day of it, but, yeah. We'll, we'll visit a snowy place if we want snow. Or go to Tennessee for the leaves or something. Yeah, those leaves are great, it, you know, if you enjoy them from afar. But if they fall in your yard, we, you know, we had a big wooded yard. <laughs> 
Lordy. We spent all day raking. So we miss them, <laughs> but we don't miss it too much. The thing for me is the, like you said, endless summer, those hot days last a long time. They do. And it's okay. I mean, I'd rather have a long period of hot weather than a long period of freezing weather. But yeah, we miss it. Gina has a question that is a common one here. A lot of people buy their homes and they don't move in immediately for whatever reason. So she wants to know, how do you hire someone to take care of your lawn and adjust your sprinklers, things like that? Mm -hmm. I think word of mouth is the best. Uh, you can ask your neighbors. Once you obtain a home, you can get on next door. You'll never have to worry about finding a provider for a service if you're on next door. Right. You'll get endless recommendations. But yeah, mm -hmm. use that cool network that you have now that you're a villager. Tap into your neighbors. Mm -hmm. They'll tell you what to do. Mm -hmm. Believe me, they'll tell you what to do. <laughs> Here's what you've been waiting for. This guy back here. <laughs> you can see he lets us do all the work and he just pops up for the attention. <laughs> But he's got a, a set of questions written from Susan of Chapel Hill, North Carolina. And uh, we're going to ask him these questions and uh, see how he responds. Are you ready? All right, Gizmo. How did you get your name? Have Linda and Jerry had a dachshund before? Where do you stay when they travel? How old are you, Gizmo? Well, that was great to hear from Gizmo. You know, he usually doesn't chip in. Uh, we usually answer for him, but uh, it was nice to hear from him today. Thank you for those questions, Susan. Appreciate that. That's going to do it for another edition of... Thanks to everybody that wrote questions. And thanks to the people that sent in those awesome gifts. And cards. They get lots of cards, too. It's amazing. Thank you. Please, if, go ahead. Uh, what? I was going to say, please no, like. No, you. You first. You first. You first. No, you. What? Please press that like and subscribe button for us, please. We love you guys. Until next time. See you when you get here. <laughs>